It's been nearly one year since the last major OBS update, and we're finally getting OBS Studio version 25, or at least we are soon. We're currently in the release candidate phase, or basically a beta testing phase, and this may be one of many. I don't expect there to be any major feature changes between these release candidates, but you know there'll be a lot of testing phases. As some of these features are br brand new, and they haven't really made it out into the wild yet, but this new update brings long time requested features like Vulcan game capture, UWP game capture, and some cool other stuff that I'm excited to share. There's a lot to it. We're going to jump in in today's video. That's all this video is going to be about. Uh, and I will also have links in the video description where you can download the release candidate for yourself if you want to test it out. Let's go. I'm Evil's Vox, your stream professor, and the OBS team has been very hard at work over the past year developing the next big update. Usually the updates are a little bit more quickly than this, but that's fine. It's been a year. I think it's worth it. I also wanted to note in other OBS related news that Facebook has actually become a premier sponsor of OBS. Uh, they have a few different funding options available, such as like Patreon, and then they have Open Collective where, uh, you know, other projects or whatever can contribute to an open source project and just provide funding without really any real necessary kickbacks for the organization contributing. And so there's been a few instances of this, you know, Nvidia has contributed funding to OBS. Twitch has been a premier sponsor, companies like that. And so Facebook has now actually joined the premier sponsor tier, which just basically means that they are giving a significant sum of money to the OBS project and allowing them to do great things like paying the salaries of developers, getting more, you know, hard focused community of development going on so that it's not just on a passive volunteer basis. But it's uh, there was a lot of backlash and I understand Facebook's kind of the big bad, but it's worth noting that there is no quid pro quo. There's no OBS isn't sending their user data over to Facebook and there's not they're not even collecting any, but you know, whatever. And they're not, you know, there's nothing required of them on behalf of Facebook as a result of this. It just means more money for OBS and that's a very good thing. Apologies if you see me looking off camera, there is a lot of updates. I have them on my phone here. OBS 25 is coming this month. We have a first release candidate, which means just a lot of beta testing and a lot more testing waves than usual, as there's a lot, like I mentioned, that hasn't faced real world use. I did want to mention that the GPU priority fix that requires running OBS as admin is still a thing. You still will need to run OBS as admin to take advantage of this, which will break, you know, drag and drop support and the ability to screenshot OBS with an external program like LightShot. <laughs> or uh, ShareX, but that's still like, it's still there. You just still have to run it as admin. It's not baked into the code yet. They are still hoping to find a way or implement a way that allows you to get the GPU priority fix without running as admin, or at least without quite as much admin running. But for the time being, that's still required. So the first big update are the new game hooks available for OBS 25, which we've been requesting for years and it's finally happening. You can now capture Vulcan games with game capture sources. And apparently Ubisoft actually contributed to helping make this possible. This is just in time for the launch of Doom Eternal with Doom, at least 20, Doom 2016, running significantly better on a variety of hardware with Vulcan, but being unable to capture before. And if you are unaware, Vulkan is basically a graphics rendering API. Typically on Windows, a lot of games use DirectX. And then there was DirectX 12, which was the latest with Windows 10. Um, however, you know, there's other op more open sourcey kind of alternatives to that. Like tr there was OpenGL for a lot of older games. Well, Vulkan is the newer one that competes with DirectX 12 and allows you to run things significantly cross platform, such as for Linux and things like that, but also just has a different way of accessing your hardware for games and Vulkan is really, really good. However, it's not super well adopted. And for the games that do use it, you haven't been able to capture them until now. So this is freaking great. However, it may not work specifically on Rainbow Six Siege, which I didn't even realize supported Vulkan until there's an upcoming update, which will support the new game hook. But otherwise, most games should work and I should have some on-screen footage showing that. But not just Vulkan games, UWP apps and games are also now supported through a new browser-based hook for window capture. Instead of game capture, it's under window capture. You'll be able to hook browsers, browser-based uh, windows, as well as Microsoft Store slash UWP apps. So Game Pass users are not left in the dust. You no longer need a two PC setup for this. Uh, Discord and browsers, theoretically, you know, capturing those should not have a black screen anymore. And then, so there's an automatic mode, which just kind of tries to detect whichever kind of window that you have when using the window capture source. 
Uh, however, there is some downsides of you may have some cursor lag showing up in the capture or there may be a highlighted border around the app. You may just have to crop that off. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, and eh, like it's not perfect yet. They're hoping to refine it and revise it. But for now, that was one of them. That plus Vulcan was one of the major hiccups that kept people on two PC setups. And maybe this removes that necessity. There's now finally a browser source on Linux for OBS. It took a long time. One of the other major updates is they have finally implemented a scene collection importer for other applications. So XSplit, Streamlabs OBS, Classic OBS, and more. There is now a tool for the advanced scene collection importer, which should import from these other programs. This is one of the things they're hoping to test throughout the multiple release candidate beta waves because it's not something that they're going to figure out all the kinks of until many, many people have tested many different importing scenarios. But I am excited for this because this is one of those things that Streamlabs OBS kind of had over OBS as they would let you import your OBS stuff over and a lot of other apps. XSplit has an OBS importer as well. So this kind of helps bridge that gap for people wanting to use OBS coming from another app or have maybe left OBS for Streamlabs OBS, realized the error in their ways and are now coming back. There's a new feature that enables drag and drop support to create browser sources from URLs. Now, specifically, that may sound weird on its own, but specifically, this will allow developers to make resources on websites such as for overlay packages or something like that, where you can just drag the button over from a web page into your OBS window and it will import everything that you need based on the browser source. Uh, I know there's a couple alert services and overlay services that do everything based in a browser source instead of using local media files. So this will be interesting to see how it gets implemented. I see foresee like nerd or die and stream elements and a few of those services overstream maybe kind of implementing these kinds of things where you just have one button that you drag into OBS and it sets everything up would be freaking cool. Uh, there's a demo I can kind of show you on screen and I'll have linked below. It's worth noting though, running OBS as admin breaks drag and drop support. So if you are wanting to use something like this, you'll need to temporarily run OBS not as admin to get everything set up and then set it back to run as admin to get the GPU priority fix. So worth noting there. OBS Studio Studio Mode, where you have the preview and the program monitor pulled up side by side, now has a T-bar support. A T-bar is basically a transition bar. I think that's that's maybe what it even stands for, where you basically have control to, traditionally on a physical bar to control the speed and the time it takes to transition from one scene to another. And you can go back and forth or leave it halfway, do some weird creative stuff with that, traditionally on video mixers and things like that. The problem has been that OBS doesn't support it in software, which maybe not a lot of people will use in software, but some people have and have been requesting it. But also without that software support, there's no way to actually implement hardware support for such a T-bar or like a virtual video mixer. And a lot of people have been wanting that, especially for big, you know, multi setup streaming events and esports events, things like that. Finally here, SRT support has been added to OBS Studio. SRT stands for Secure Reliable Transport and allows you to basically, it's kind of like NDI in that you can stream your video feed across the network to another source to be picked up and managed from there. And at least over in vMix, there's even tools to completely manage and manipulate your stream over the network or specifically with SRT, you can do it over the internet. So it's kind of like NDI, but extends over the internet. So it does still use compression. It dynamically adjusts based on available bandwidth and things like that. It's built for unpredictable networks versus a local network. Uh, I believe OBS's implementation may just be video feeds back and forth instead of full control like vMix may have, but it's pretty excited to, exciting to see. I have a whole video actually releasing next week about NDI and all the cool stuff that it has done. I don't have SRT included. I may try to put together a video about SRT on its own, but really cool technology that we may not see anything too extravagant in OBS specifically for just yet. Uh, but in the future, there will be some exciting stuff to come from it. There's now an option if you right click the scene list to enable a button grid mode instead of just a list of text. This is kind of how XSplit Broadcaster has it set up, which just gives it a more visual buttony kind of feel and probably makes it more compatible with touch interfaces. Pretty cool to see. You can now lock the volume of audio sources in the right click menu so that they can never be adjusted unless you unlock them, which is useful to prevent accidental you know, volume changes. Alternatively, you always had the option of hiding it in the audio mixer, but this way it's there. It's just harder to actually like adjust without unlocking it, which is handy in some situations. It's kind of like locking your sources so you don't accidentally adjust where it is when you're clicking. It's cool. 
There's now also icons for your source list so you can see a visual representation of the different types of sources that you're adding. You can enable or disable it. Just a little extra visibility and accessibility thing that I like to see. Also, cube LUTs, dot cube 3D LUTs have been added to OBS. Previously, it supported LUTs, but only in a PNG format where you just kind of applied your color grade to a basic color grid PNG file, and then that applies to your webcam. That didn't always make for the most accurate of results, especially when you're using, you know, big fancy cameras and trying to use LUTs on them in the way you would a video editor. The results weren't always the same. I'll try to have a side by side difference and to highlight some of the differences of the same color grade, but that's exciting to see. I honestly didn't think they would or could implement that. So seeing that is pretty cool. I can make a whole separate video on how to make your own uh, LUTs if you would like separately. Let me know in the comments below. Before we get to the rest of the updates, because there's still quite a few things and some fixes to note, I wanted to talk about our sponsor, Owned. Owned is a place you can go to get on-stream graphics, alerts, social media banners, things like that to really amplify your stream, make it a lot more polished, help yourself stand out from the crowd, and they're all a little bit customizable to some degree, so you can get exactly what you want, and they even have a cool little visualizer where you can see the alerts and the overlays happen real time to make your decision a little bit better. Head over to eposvox.gg slash OWN3D. They always have sales running so you can save a coin to you know, get the package that you so desire because they have some really cool stuff and I highly recommend them. Back to the OBS updates. Uh, they now have the option to show all audio sources in the advanced audio properties so you can adjust things a little bit better. You can now use percents instead of decibels for advanced audio properties for changing volume levels and things like that. A lot of people have had a debate over decibels versus percentage in audio levels and things like that. And there's been arguments back and forth about which is the superior, the proper way to do it. Well, now you get to choose. Now, when you set up the replay buffer, there's now a save replay buffer next to the start replay buffer button in the user interface, just to make it a little bit easier to use. You still have to set up a hotkey for save replay buffer before you uh, exit the menu upon enabling it. I don't know if they will disable that now since there is a clickable button, but pretty cool to see. There's now support for video capture devices that auto rotate when you rotate them, like the Logitech Stream Cam. It can auto rotate to vertical mode when you turn it on its side. There's now support for this in OBS Studio. I'll have my Stream Cam review coming soon. I was late getting it. Weird. I have a whole, we'll talk about that in the review, but support for that has already been added, which is pretty cool. Now, when you set up a preview projector, which shows the full screen preview of whichever source you choose on a full screen monitor for sending to an actual projector or a program view or to a capture card, what have you, you can actually right click on that projector preview and change what kind it is. Previously, you could only, you know, select what type you wanted before it went out and then you had to disable it, select it again. Now you can right click the preview and change whether you want it on a different monitor, what type of preview you want and whether you want a full screen or windowed, which is pretty handy. You can now copy and paste multiple sources at a time between your scenes. Nice. You can enable or disable uh, BBTV or FFZ chat extensions for Twitch whenever you're syncing your account in the account settings. That way you can get those extra emotes and things like that supported by default without needing to, you know, do anything crazy. Support it automatically, which is pretty cool. That was one of the things people were saying was lacking about the Twitch implementation. There's now a uh, system tray icon that indicates when recording is paused because pause recording was added a while back. Uh, there's now an icon that actually indicates when that's paused. Uh, Ice Lake CPUs, uh, which are 10th gen. There's not a whole lot of them out in the wild. Ice Lake CPUs have an updated quick sync and that quick sync implementation has been updated for OBS in this update, which adds a custom quantization. I hope I'm saying that right. I never say that right. Right. Custom quantization ma uh, matrix. Uh, that's just an extra option specific to those CPUs. I don't have any 10th gen CPUs in available to test. I'm actually working on a big video quality encoder analysis video showing the different encoders and I will have quick sync in there, but not 10th gen just because I have no access to 10th gen CPUs at all. So just keep that in mind. That option is available if you're running. I think it's pretty much only laptops right now running 10th gen processors with the new iGPUs that have that new quick sync encoder. There you go. There's now an option to toggle looping in the scroll filter for your little like ticker feeds that scroll on the bottom of the screen or whatever. You can finally manually set up a, fil a scroll filter with it. Nice. Uh, there's a fade to black transition that was added to the quick transitions. Uh, you can now add more variables to the file name formatting, such as frame rate, resolution, things like that, just to help make your final file names a little bit easier to find. This will be super helpful to me, who just builds up a big horde of recordings and has to sort them, and the names aren't useful for that, so that will help me just a little bit. Uh, you can now set up a hotkey to reset the stats panel, which may sound silly, 
But when you're benchmarking OBS, I have requested this feature myself many times. I think it was added just to appease me. When I'm benchmarking OBS, I'm doing my streaming tests or whatever, I have to alt tab out of the game to reset the stats window and then alt tab back in. And that alt tab process into a game frequently kicks up a little bit of render lag just during the time it takes to alt tab because there's like a stall in the game capture and that muddies the results because then I have to subtract that from the results once I actually start recording and all of all of that. It's a mess. There's now a hotkey for it. Thank you, devs. <laughs> uh, video settings now show the resolution and aspect ratio. There's now a fix for Twitch not loading dark mode the first time you set it up for like the chat panels and things like that. You won't get blinded anymore. Uh, there's now the default sizes for text and color sources has have been increased from their minuscule size that they started with and have been there since legacy OBS. And then there's a bunch of other fixes. And again, just keep in mind, if you want that GPU priority fix for render lag, which I have a whole video on linked below, if you missed it, you do still have to run OBS as admin. This is not integrated in any new way at the moment. It still requires that, but the, the fix is still present at least, you know, they didn't remove it or anything. So if you're interested in testing this build for yourself, you can download the first or depending on when this, when you watch this video, there may be five other release clients available. Uh, release candidate for OBS linked in the description below and join the uh, OBS Discord. I'll have a link to that in the description below. They have specifically a beta testing channel where you can ask questions or give feedback based on your experiences with this specific release candidate. Hope you enjoyed this episode of OBS updates and stream guides. Uh, let me know what your favorite update or fix is in the comment section down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more stream guides. Uh, check us out on Floatplane where you can get early access to videos and behind the scenes content. I already said I'm Eposvox. I'll see you later.